Hello class and welcome to This Week in Developmental Psychology. My name is Dr. Neil Sogi. This week we will be exploring early adulthood. So historically, early adulthood spanned from approximately the age of 18 until 40 to 45. Uh, so the beginning of middle adulthood. And more recently, developmentalists have divided this age period into two separate stages. Emerging adulthood followed by early adulthood. Now, although these age periods differ in their physical, cognitive, and social development, overall, the, this age period from four, 18 to 45 is a time of peak physical capabilities and the emergence of more mature cognitive development, as well as financial independence and intimate relationships. And so that's what we'll be exploring in today's lecture. So when we look at emerging adulthood, we can kind of consider that period uh, between the late teens and early 20s to be kind of the bottom end there. So age is approximately 18 to 25. Uh, although some researchers have included up to the age of 29 in their definitions for emerging adulthood, uh, some researchers argue that emerging adulthood is neither adolescence nor is it young adulthood. Individuals in this age period have left behind the relative dependency of childhood and adolescence, but have not yet taken on the responsibility of adulthood. Emerging adulthood is a time of life when many different directions remain possible. When little about the future is decided for certain, when the scope of independent exploration of life's possibilities is greater for most people than it will be at really any other period of their course of life. Now, some researchers identify five characteristics of emerging adulthood that distinguish it from adolescence as well as from young adulthood. First off, it is the age of identity exploration. Now, if you recall, in 1950s, Eric Erickson proposed that it was during adolescence that humans wrestled with the question of identity. Yet, even Erickson commented on a trend during the late part of the 20th century that there seemed to be a prolonged adolescence in industrialized societies. And today, most identity development occurs during the late teens as well as can extend into the early 20s. And so there can be um, some delay that some will consider for adolescence or uh, consider it this, this time to be emerging adulthood. It is this emerging alt adulthood that people um, may be exploring career choices and ideas about uh, intimate relationships and their own sexuality. And thereby, they are setting their foundation for adulthood. Now, this time period has also been described as an age of instability. Because there is this exploration that tends to generate uncertainty and instability. Emerging adults change jobs. They change relationships. They change relationships and residences more frequently than other age groups do. This is also the age of self-focus. Being self-focused is really not the same as being self-centered. Adolescents are more self-centered than emerging adults. But uh, some research has pointed to the fact that emerging adults tend to be while they, while they tend to be very considerate of the feelings of others, especially their parents, 
they start to begin to see their parents as people, not just as parents, something most adolescents fail to do. Uh, nonetheless, emerging adults focus more on themselves as they realize that they have few obligations to others and that this is the time where they can do what they want with their life. This is also the age of feeling in between. When if asked if they feel like adults, uh, people from the ages of 18 to 25 answer yes and no. They don't feel like teens and they don't feel like adults over the age of 25. Most emerging, emerging adults have gone through uh, the changes of puberty, are typically no longer in high school. Many have also moved out of their parents' home. So, they no longer feel as dependent as they did as teenagers, yet they may still be financially dependent on their parents to some degree, and they may have not completely attained some of the indicators of adulthood, such as finishing their education, obtaining a good full-time job, being in a committed relationship, or being responsible for others. It is not surprising that research finds that 60% of uh, people from the age of 18 through to 25 felt that in some ways they were adults, but in some ways they were not adults. Emerging adulthood is also an age of possibilities. It's a time of optimism as more 18 to 25 year olds feel that they will someday get where they want to be in life. Research suggests that this optimism is because these dreams have not yet been tested. For example, it is easier to believe that you will eventually find your soulmate when you have not had to have been in a serious relationship yet. It may also be a chance to change directions for those who whose lives live up to this point uh, have been difficult. Uh, the experiences of childhood and teens are influenced by the choices and decisions of their parents. If the parents are dysfunctional, there is little a child can do about it. But as the individual emerges into adulthood, people can move out and they can begin to move on. They have the chance to transform their lives and move away from these unhealthy environments. Even those whose lives were happier and more fulfilling as children now have the opportunity in emerging adulthood to become independent and make decisions about the direction they will take their life in. This is also a time of their physiological peak. People in their mid-twenties to mid-forties uh, are considered to be in early adulthood. By the time we reach early adulthood, our physical maturation is complete. Although our height and weight may increase slightly, those in their early 20s are probably at the peak of their physiological development, including their muscle strength, their reaction times, their sensory abilities and cardiac functioning, the reproduction system. Their motor skills, their strength, their lung capacity are all operating at their best. Most professional athletes are at the top of their game during this stage, and most women have children in early adulthood years. The aging process actually begins during early adulthood. Around the age of 30, many changes begin to occur in different parts of the body. For example, the lens of the eye starts to stiffen and thicken, resulting in changes in vision, usually affecting the ability to focus on close objects. Then there's some development in career development and employment. 
that becomes a very important part of early adulthood as a whole, not just emerging adulthood. Work overall in early, early adulthood plays a significant role in the lives of people and emerging and early adulthood is the time when most of us make choices that will establish our careers. Career development has a number of stages that we should be mindful of. Stage one, according to research, is when a child selects careers based upon what appears glamorous and exciting to them. Stage two is the stage when a teen begins to include their abilities and limitations in addition to the glamour of the occupation, and that begins to narrow down the choices. Stage three is when the older teens and emerging adults narrow their choices further and begin to weigh more objectively the requirements, the rewards, and downsides of careers, along with comparing possible careers with their own interests, their own values, and future goals. However, some young people in this stage fall into careers simply because these were what were available to them at the time or because of family pressures to pursue particular paths or because these were high paying jobs rather than from an intrinsic interest in that career path. And then finally, there's the fourth stage of career development that suggests that by our mid to late thirties, many people settle into their careers. Even though they may not change companies or move up in their position, there's a sense of continuity and forward motion in their careers. However, some people at this point in their working life may feel trapped especially if they have little opportunity for advancement and are in what they feel to be a dead-end job. Now, and here's where things have changed a little bit for millennials compared to the many previous generations of early adults. In recent years, young adults are more likely to find themselves job hopping and periodically going back to school to further their education and retraining. Uh, and this is much more prevalent than it was in previous generations. However, researchers have found that occupation interests remain fairly stable. So despite more frequent changes in jobs, most people are generally seeking jobs with similar interests rather than an entirely new career. And then we come to the big major uh, psychological stage of development for uh, early adulthood. And that is Eric Erickson's intimacy versus isolation. So when it comes to Erickson's theory, intimacy versus isolation is this stage six. Uh, this stage happens in young adulthood, early adulthood, and may trail off by middle age. And this makes sense. When you're 18, you're probably starting college, you're thinking about your future. You're no longer in high school where you can interact with people, so you want to have relationships that can last. You're no longer looking for a lovey-dovey romantic relationship, but instead one that can be more you can be more intimate with. When it comes to friendships, you want people you can spend a lifetime with and not just acquaintances. You want to build connections to help your career. And the list goes on. Now, during the beginning of this stage, the effects of stage five, if you recall, identity versus role confusion, that still lingers there for many, many years. Identity versus role confusion takes place during those teenage years and involves the teen wondering what their place in the world is. They might conform to others to find their place or experiment with different identities. And we've all observed it when teens were um, looking one way one week and then they come back and they look completely different the next week and their hair colors changed and their styles have changed. And this 
state these stages sometimes get combined uh, and we're still using our friends as an extension of our identities but when you come to intimacy versus isolation that peaks at around the age of 30 which does make sense at that age we're still relatively young but are old enough to have hopefully found our place in life and we want to maintain good relationships with people whether they be friends or lovers now while it's never too late to form intimate relationships with people this is the stage where it matters most you're young and you can explore the world to some extent and those who can form intimate relationships will have relationships that will last a lifetime. Meanwhile, those who fall, uh, sorry, sorry, those who, who fall under the trap of failing at this stage will feel depression and despair. And the last thing anyone wants to do is to die alone. So you've probably known someone who's struggling with this stage. They go through relationships like some people go through tissue paper. They may feel jealous of others uh, and how others are succeeding in their relationships. And their attitudes uh, just seem to make the situation worse. Then there are those that just can't keep friends. They may be too clingy or too demanding or have attitude problems that are unchecked. Now, within Erickson's theory, a person's inability to keep relationships may be due to previous stages not being satisfied. Those who haven't found their identities may have trouble with relationships. If you don't know yourself and what you want to do in life, how can you stay committed to another person? And so, part of the process of being an adult and as you get older in adulthood is to sometimes go back and shore up some of the developmental stages that came before and adjust yourself a little bit so that you can strengthen that foundation of your relationship consciously, deliberately. Now it should be noted that this is a generality. Some people find their identities later in life, while others may have all their social needs met when they're young. Just because you're still struggling with your identity doesn't mean that you're going to be alone forever. Psychological theories are a good way to help figure out the human mind, but every mind is very complex and there's always going to be exceptions to the rule. But generally speaking, this is the time in early adulthood when intimacy versus isolation is established and so finding and committing to and learning to deal with uh, people in, in intimate relationships is extremely important at this stage. Now, I hope you enjoyed this week. You take care. Bye-bye.